the Dim Din Podcast, a safe space to talk about misconceptions, perceptions, assumptions, and frustrations. Join us for conversations and stories that explore how embracing our differences leads to a balanced, strong, and harmonious world. Hello and welcome to the Dim Din Podcast, your very safe space to have conversations about misconceptions, perceptions, assumptions, and frustrations amongst Africans here in the diaspora. I am your ho- host, Becca, a.k.a. the Syrianadian. Today we have with us two amazing guests who are going to join me to have another brilliant conversation, just like you like it. I'll pass it over to them to introduce themselves. On my near right, we have um, Ola from Nigeria, and on my far right, we have Margaret from Sierra Leone. Hello, everyone. My name is Margaret McCarthy. As the host already said, I'm a Sierra Leonean living in Canada for over 20 years. Ooh. Yes. I am a mom of three amazing boys. I'm a grandma of two beautiful girls and a very happy wife. Oh. Oh. Okay, okay. We'll come back to either a fun fact or a historical fact. Or maybe let's just do that now. Can I can do that. Yeah? Can you tell About us? S- my country? Yes, Sierra Leone. S- Sierra Leone, f- Freetown. Mm-hmm. I, w- I want to go with historical fact. Okay. Um, I would say if you have the opportunity to visit Freetown, mm-hmm. you cannot miss going to Bonds Island. The locals call it Bonds, mm-hmm. but it's Bonds, B-U-N-C-E, island. Ah, yes. I did not know that. I know, <laughs> I know. Well, it's, it's a very short, like, let's say, boat or ferry ride from the capital city, mm-hmm. which is Freetown. And when you go there, it gives you a glimpse of the dark days mm. of the history of West Africa. Right, and we all know what that is, which is the slave trade. Mm. So it was at that island where the the the, Briti- the, in the British in took like their big ships, where they load all our brothers and sisters mm. to bring them to America as slaves. Huh. So so if you get to visit Freetown, that f- should be a must. You should go visit. Thank you. Next time I visit my own country (laughs) where I was born and don't know this history, (laughs) I will be going there. Yes, you should. (laughs) That's right. You should. Over to you, Ola. Thank you very much, Maggie. You're welcome. Uh, my name is uh, Ola. I'm uh, Nigerian, and I've been here. S- I've been in Canada since uh, 2008. Mm-hmm. Uh, first, actually, I lived in Vernon, BC. Mm-hmm. I lived in a fantastic homestay family before moving to Edmonton in 2009, mm-hmm. and I've been here ever since. So I kind of made it a home away from home, coming here alone. Um, mm-hmm. uh, obviously. Fun fact about Nigeria: Obviously, we are the most populous African country, mm-hmm. over 200 million. Uh, as a result of that, of course, we have over 500 uh, indigenous languages mm. in Nigeria. So you can speak to 10 different Nigerians and we all sound differently because <laughs> of the <laughs> accent and the fact that the basic Nigerian can speak at least three languages without trying. Wow. Oh, wow. And most people also do not know this, at least m- most people outside of Africa. British English is our first language and whatever we speak after that is our second one. So oh, it wow. does come as a surprise no to people way. when we come here and they say, wow, your English is so good, <laughs> not knowing that that's how we were actually raised. And London, England is actually only six hours away from Nigeria. Huh. Yeah, it's the same. You have same learned place. a little bit already about Sierra Leone and Nigeria. Make sure to visit if you haven't. Add that to your bucket list. That's right. Okay, now to the topic of the day. They say... What doesn't kill you make you stronger? Yep. Mm -hmm. Or, when life gives you lemons, make a very delicious lemonade. That's right. Mm -hmm. Out of that. We are going to talk today about the very essence of that and the experience that these two guests have had. Mm. Turning lemonade or lemon into lemonade with an additional Sierra Leone and Nigerian spice to make it even... (laughs) Spicier. <laughs> <laughs> you can say that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <That's right>. yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> but let's take a look at 
take it over to them to learn a little bit about that period in their lives mm. where they experienced something that was meant to break them. And mm. we want to know what that was and how that brought about where things are at today without telling us exactly where you're at right now. Are we mm. starting ladies first or is the gent taking this one? Sure, I can take this go. one. Okay, go for <laughs> it. Um, so like I mentioned before, I, uh, I came to Canada at the, uh, in 2008 and obviously I didn't know anyone actually in Canada. Mm. I, uh, the day I actually got my visa, the next day I left the country. So I didn't even have time to <laughs> say goodbye to friends or family. Mm -hmm. So uh, I moved, when I came from Nigeria, I went straight to this place called Vernon, BC. Mm. It's equivalent to like St. Albert in uh, mm. obviously just mm. Alberta. Yeah. So it's not a place that gets a lot of black people. So it was mm. very foreign to, mm. to myself and to them. Mm -hmm. um, so I lived in a lake house, which was fantastic with like this Canadian homestay family and they took me in and they were very wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, so they took in international students like me and uh, a few of us from different countries as well too. So I got to assimilate and also to adapt mm -hmm. and which was actually great for me because obviously going from Nigeria, which was plus 32 degrees mm -hmm. temperature wise to come into Edmonton would have been a terrible <laughs> decision because <laughs> it would have been a, like, a, 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 like a 60 degree swing. And um, I don't think my body would have been able to just adapt immediately. <laughs> so know. going to Vernon, uh, that was back in November 2008, so it was just around like the fall time. Mm -hmm. It was perfect. And uh, I stayed there for about eight months. I did like my grade 12. And that was a good way to uh, get used to the Canadian system, like the school system and stuff. And with that, I used that to apply to different universities. Mm. Now, bear in mind that because I came here alone, no family, nothing. Not, wow. not I didn't know anyone in Canada. So wow. pretty much I had to figure it out all by myself. Um, I was fortunate enough to get admitted to U of A. Mm. So I, that was one of the reasons why I came to Edmonton back then, 2009. Um, so I stayed at U of A for a year. Mm -hmm. But of course, international student as well too. So I moved to McEwen, mm. uh, 2010. Now, of course... All of this, I'm finding myself, and I'm still just a teen at the time, too, without okay. knowing anyone. So mm -hmm. you're pretty much always like, uh, how do I put this, on survival mode, mm -hmm. you know? You're mm -hmm. trying to find the uh, necessities and the basics and making friends along the way. Mm -hmm. um, I'm also grateful for, like, a couple of advices that I had back then at McEwen. They were, like, those um, student advices, mm -hmm. into, uh, like, in charge of international students. So they were, like, my uh, therapist, shall I say. Mm -hmm. So they were very like great um, for for me at the time. Then, mm -hmm. uh, obviously, fast forward doing that, trying to you know figure out school life, everything. Mm -hmm. Art was like not even there. It was the least of my worries because okay. you have to worry about you know passing your classes, making sure you. More importantly, making sure your grades were good enough to have your study permit, your work mm. permit intact. Mm -hmm. And you also have to make sure that you're always constantly visiting the CIC website to what make changes. sure that every status was on point, your passport, everything that comes with like being um, an immigrant, mm -hmm. of course, which uh, not, I'm sure a lot of people would also, a lot of immigrants would be able to relate to in terms of like the constant pressure of always being a, uh, and that state of mind to make sure that your papers are good because you are technically in a foreign land, right? Mm -hmm. um, so after about maybe 10 years or so of not sketching after coming to Canada, because again, it was the least of my worries. Mm -hmm. You're worrying about paying school fees, shelter, mm -hmm. you know, all of those little things. I picked up a pencil one day because um, I, I have this uh, poster, I'm sure. I'm not sure if your fans know this. I love watching cartoons like Family Guy, uh, South Park, uh, and those kind of things. Um, so I had the posters in my room one day, and I couldn't sleep. Oh, so oh. in the middle of the night, 2 a.m. one day, I was just staring at it, and the uh, South Park one, and I was like, you know what would be cool if I just sketched them? <laughs> so I took the poster down at 2 a.m. in the morning, and I, I picked up the pencil after so many years. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, let's see if I still got it. Mm -hmm. And I drew it. It wasn't great, but it was like, okay, not bad. I was like, after so long, I was going to just, uh, I enjoyed the feeling. Mm -hmm. So I decided to keep going at it while I was still in school and mm -hmm. all of those things. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, but it felt like a feel-good factor, then it became a hobby, which is perfect in like a place like Edmonton when it's cold eight months out of 12. Mm -hmm. So the good thing about art is that I didn't really need anybody else to do it. Mm -hmm. I just had the materials, I could sit inside and just, you know, literally while you're struggling and all of those things, like you said, making lemonade out of lemons, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I realized that when I was sketching, whatever problems I dealt with, I completely forgot about them because I was zoned uh, out. So that was your own therapy as well. Literally was. So uh. for some people it was like maybe music or mm -hmm. lyrics or whatever, or taking photograph and stuff like that. But I find mine with visual art. Mm. And then, uh, of course, then the pandemic hit. COVID-19. Exactly. Mm. So when it actually was, um, at that time, I was, again, I wasn't, sketching so frequently but mm -hmm. then all i i realized i was actually one of the lucky people that was um still working at the time fortunately mm -hmm. and but when i got home there was nothing to do because i couldn't go outside to either play sports which i also enjoyed doing and stuff mm -hmm. like that so i decided okay why don't i start watching youtube videos and start teaching myself mm. how to sketch so i was like okay well wow. since i never officially went to school for it uh let's see what i can come up with and I had this belief that whatever I'm working on something, I never tell people what I'm working on because I wanted to be like, the moment I start putting it out there, I might start making more mistakes. Mm -hmm. ah, so I started... There's more pressure. Exactly. So oh. if nobody knows what I'm doing as my work, then I feel like if I don't get it right, that's fine. It's just <laughs> nobody between, knows. Nobody just knows. Just you and you. So by the time <laughs> I disclose to somebody, I may be 80% done with the mm -hmm. work. Then I tell them I'm still 10% in. Mm. Okay. So whatever mistakes I make at the time would not affect exactly the work because I've done the bulk of it. So mm -hmm. that was kind of like my perception. You know, mm -hmm. it felt like a little bit superstitious belief, but it, in a way it worked for me. It works. Um, and then so when the when the when COVID hit and stuff like that, I just started doing. It. I started drawing, started watching YouTube a little bit more, and then I realized that I'm sitting in one spot for six hours at a time, wow. eight hours, and I'm just like. Just sketching. Just sketching. And wow. Just, wow. I just have music. And another thing I had in my background, I love watching um, Animal Planet. Oh, wow. Oh. Uh, so that was, uh, I needed something in the background that was interesting enough, but not too interesting that it was going to distract, distract me. Okay. Because I was already stimulating my brain a lot with the details I was putting into mm -hmm. the drawing I was doing. So it was like ex ex exercising my fingers and mm. my brain, but in the, Sometimes music worked, mm -hmm. but I needed variety. Mm. So it's like sometimes I'll go into, just like I'll go into maybe play video games sometimes, and I'll switch it, so okay, two hours of that or an hour of that, you know, I've st stimulated my mind, then I would change it again. Mm -hmm. So then I just went at it, I kept on going, and I realized that every single piece I was working on, I was very happy. It was putting a smile on my face. I forgot everything that was going on in the world. Mm -hmm. And I tuned out the internet at the time. And the other thing was that we all started also with the George Floyd time, just at the start mm. of the pandemic. Oh, okay. um, my artwork, one of uh, my artworks there, the um, I titled it Black is Beautiful, the one just right in the middle there. Right over there. Yeah, I spent mm. about 60 hours on that piece, taking over two, three months. It was my birthday gift to myself wow. in 2020. You gift yourself. I did. I okay. actually did. That drawing meant a lot to me. It's my favorite one because I put, I think I put my heart and soul into it. Mm -hmm. Because obviously during the whole George Floyd time was not the best time for black people and stuff like that, mentally, physically. Mm -hmm. So the little girl, as I was drawing her, I realized he was putting a smile on my face and mm -hmm. I did not know exactly what was going on in the world because I turned off internet. Mm -hmm. I just, like, I threw my phone somewhere and just, mm -hmm. yeah. And then I had Animal Planet in the background because I loved, like, the listening to david because i think he's the one that also voices the animal planet things which by the way is a job i'd love to do <laughs> someday and just he's putting it out there and just, and just voice i uh, like you know like uh movies or whatever like that stuff like that animal planet so it was fantastic for me and i realized i didn't need to rely on anyone to do it Beautiful. and so it was a feel good factor and it just became a hobby i just started enjoying and enjoying mm -hmm. and now four years later i didn't think i would be in the situation that i am with my major affection for art and where i am right now with uh 
some of my art pieces. All these lemonades. Yeah, in exactly. Flavors. And <laughs> it, it, I, I've, I've worked with uh, some fantastic organizations oh. as well too, like um, you know, Five Artists One Love and stuff. And mm. even last year, I had um, some of my artworks at the Alberta Art Gallery. Oh. No way! Yeah, yeah, for Black History Month and wow. a few months after, and for Juneteenth as well. Wow, and, um, that's good. Yeah. So things are really, things are really going for you now, and all of that came about with you being faced with a challenging moment, right from coming to a strange country exactly. all by yourself, no family, no family, finding mm. your way around with mm. the support that you met here. Yeah, of course. Um, of course. Going through school, COVID happened, a time when some of us were like, God, why? What sins like, did mm -hmm. we commit that, we <laughs> <laughs> that yeah. we're not aware of, right? Some people were depressed and anxious, and a lot of things happened to a lot of people, mm. right? But just that moment that was a source of pain and darkness yeah, for a lot of people, right. you took and turned into getting to know yourself a little yep, exactly. more and learn and teaching yourself yeah yeah like he actually it felt like he uh, he channeled a few other skills that i didn't know i even had right. and because uh, ever since then it's improved my uh, social skills a lot because mm. i have to talk to people about it who ask me about my artworks what was going through my mind right. why did i spend 50 hours on this piece why 45 on that what are the details mm. what matters to me and a lot of my artworks if you once you see them on my social media on my portfolio you see that a lot of them do center around black people black culture mm -hmm. and also to showcase that we're not a monolith you know uh -huh. the, you know, like i love that and also like drawing like uh wildlife you know one Beautiful. of my artwork is a uh, is a leopard and uh yeah so they come in different forms and mm -hmm. all of the things just to showcase that you know what we can do this we have different talents as black people whatever it is that we just set our minds to we really can okay. pull it off and since then i've had to go to some schools mm. as well to to um to talk about like my coming to canada at such a young age knowing no one and uh mm. making it a home away from home and how art has transformed my perspective or my networking my social skills and Beautiful. those kind of things i think that uh yeah i've been Grateful for art, honestly speaking. Wonderful, wonderful. Yeah. If I were in your shoe, I would be grateful for yeah, art too. Yeah. Right. Okay, so now that we've learned a little bit about your lemon, <laughs> that, or the lemons <laughs> rather, that you <laughs> turned into these beautiful lemonades here, right. let's hear a little bit from you, uh, Maggie. Tell us about your lemons. My lemons. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, where do I begin? Okay, the last time I visited back home, mm -hmm. because my mom was back home, right? Mm -hmm was 2018, so my mom was sick, I had to go, it was emergency. Mm -hmm. That was the last time I saw her. Mm -hmm. So as soon as I came back, my marriage fell apart. Mm. So with three kids, so I was a single mom for, let's say for five years, it was hard. Mm -hmm. It was hard. My life was Absolutely. centered around my boys. Mm. All I wanted was them to have a, a nice place to sleep, food on the table every day. So I couldn't go see my, my mom for five years, mm -hmm. eight years. I was helping as much as I can with sending money and stuff like that, but I couldn't go see her. And I would cry every day. I said, God, don't let, let my mom die. Mm -hmm. I wanted to take my kids to go see her. So cutting short, I met my now husband. So I met him, the first thing I told him is, I want to go see my mom. Aww. If you want to do anything for me, please take me so I can see my mom. So he, agree he agreed. So we, we got everything ready. That was 2001. We got married during the pandemic, which, mm -hmm. is, which was 2020. Mm -hmm. So he said, I'm not going to wait. I'm like, it's the pandemic. We have no one here. Like, I was alone, just me and my kids. I don't have no auntie, no sister, no one in Canada. Mm -hmm. It was just me. So he said, no, let's do it. We're not going to wait. So we did it anyways, 2020. So 2021, we pack up everything. And my mom was there. Mm -hmm. She was older, 84, mm -hmm. but she was strong. Mm -hmm. We talk almost every day, and we're counting down the days. She will tell me, oh, 
five more months because we were supposed to go in December. Mm -hmm. Oh, three more months. Oh, two more months. One day, my husband was working then in Lloydminster. Mm -hmm. Usually, I'll drive to go there. This day, I just said, oh, I'm going to take the bus. Mm -hmm. I went on the bus. As soon as I got off the bus, my phone rang, my sister. I said, say, what? Because you know the time. When, when you get called at that time, you're like, what's going on what's now? Going I'm on? like, what? Mm -hmm. He said to your mom. I said, what? What? What's what my mom? mom? He said, oh, she's not responding. I'm like, please stop. Please stop. So she called me on video, and she was laying there. She was laying there. My mom died just like that. Oh and no. the day before, she w it was my, my younger brother's 20th wedding anniversary. Oh. She was there dancing, singing the video. Her sent the video to me. So that was the last thing you expected. I expected. I'm like, what? It's November 22nd. We're supposed to leave December to go see her, oh take the no. kids, take my new husband. We're supposed to go do the traditional wedding back home. Oh. I, I'm, I'm telling you, I don't know how I left Canada. I don't know how I, how I even went, how I got to Africa. Right. I didn't know. I did. It was out of body experience. Mm -hmm. It was really, really tough. Mm -hmm. So I went there. We did her funeral i'm like i was coming to do a wedding now i'm coming to bury my mom oh, no. it was it was tough it was tough that's why i'm wearing that's her favorite color purple oh. so anyways one night i was sleeping back home mm -hmm. i couldn't sleep i was crying the whole night i was crying my eyes off mm -hmm. i'm like god why god why because i'm a woman of faith i believed you i trusted you mm -hmm. that you would let me see my mom before she passed why then, of course, you start blaming yourself. Of oh, it be, it be, because I don't have enough money, because of this, because of that, I don't even know what I was saying. I said, if only I was making enough money, mm -hmm. you know, I would have been able to come see my mom. Then that's when the idea came to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because one of my, my assistant pastor's wife, mm -hmm. she does business, but by then I didn't even know the business she does okay. but the the husband during covid i think he lost his job something like that so he gave a testimony thank god for my my wife's business that mm -hmm. you know kept the family oh, wow. paid the mortgage the, all of a sudden i just thought about this lady mm -hmm. like i'm like what am i thinking of her i don't even know what she does mm -hmm. like what she does because i am very business minded okay very business minded mm -hmm. since i was a little girl my dad wanted me to do nothing i'm like no I love doing business. Mm -hmm. The first time I did business, from Sierra Leone to Guinea back then, you go to Guinea, you buy goods. I was pregnant with my first child. Mm -hmm. I didn't even tell his dad. Mm -hmm. I just left a note because he would say no. Mm -hmm. And I, le I left, I went. I am very business minded. Mm -hmm. So all of a sudden I started thinking about this lady. I'm like, okay, so I was back home. Then I texted her on Messenger. I said, I don't know why, but I'm thinking of, of when, like when I get back to Canada to start a business, I want like a side hustle, mm -hmm. something to do that will give me extra. Mm -hmm. So next time, if you know, if you're in a situation like that, I will have something, you know, yeah. to do something. Mm -hmm. So I said, for some reason, you are in my thoughts. Mm -hmm. I said, so when I come back to Canada, we'll talk about business. Then she said, oh yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. When you come back, we talk. So that's how my business, business came, about. came about. Ah, yeah. and as you and I were talking, you had mentioned a piece too about even when you came back to Canada, you had planned to do. Yes. Yeah. Yes, so coming back from Africa, mm -hmm. we were plan we planned to move to Ottawa, mm -hmm. my husband and I. Mm -hmm. But my baby, my youngest son, 18, that's when he went to grade 12. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, we're leaving. Like he started crying, Mom, how am I going to go to grade 12 and graduate with people I don't even know? Different province, diff you know? Then I'm like, I didn't even think about him. Like, oh, yeah, mm -hmm. okay, we'll stay for a year. Mm -hmm. So that's when we started looking for a place to move. We got a place. Rented U-Haul. Mm -hmm. We got in the, the, the brake fail, like major on accident on the U-Haul. Like mm. major. My husband, myself, and him. Like major. Up till now, because my husband used to work out in the field. He can't work. Oh, no. His shoulder, his, he, just last week he had to take the cortisone injection again. And that's from so the accident? From the accident, yeah. It was major. It was bad. Like the, the fire truck, the ambulance, they have to take him to the... It was bad. 
Mm. So I think that was God pushing me that, yeah, it's time for you to start your business. Mm. Because before that, I used to work at the Alberta Health Services mm -hmm. as healthcare aid, and I'm a hairstylist. Mm -hmm. But you know, as you get older, I'm over 50 now, right? No way. Oh, I'm a grandma. Okay. Okay. I told you I'm a grandma of two. We're going to talk about that <laughs> later. <laughs> We're going to talk over. about looking how you look yeah. right now when I get that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm over 50. So, you know, standing for long hours doing hair, working mm -hmm. in the health field, your, your wrist, your... So, you know, I'm like, God, okay, now mm -hmm. I get it. It's time for me to Shift. venture and do something different. So. Uh. Yeah. Wonderful, yeah. wonderful. So the lemons that were thrown at you, uh, losing your mom, uh, going through a divorce, mm. having to take care of your boys, uh, you were married to a new person, yeah. but before you could go home, what happened happened. You yeah. came back, mm -hmm. you were in a major accident. accident. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Woman? I'm still here. You're still here, thriving too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. I'm Out of here. the survival phase. Yeah. Yeah. Well done, I'm well still done. Here. Okay. Thank God. Yeah, okay. Thank God. Okay. Lemons, lemonade, lemonade. With a little bit of Sierra Leone and Nigerian spices, spices. in it. <laughs> <laughs> if you're just joining <laughs> us, this is the Dim Din Podcast. And today we're talking about how these amazing guests turned their lemons into lemonade. Okay. So now we're going to go back to you, Ola. We okay. want to know, uh, and thank you, by the way, for blessing our set with your beautiful art. Mm. Thank you. You're welcome. Can you tell our viewers a little bit about, I, I know you've talked about that one a little bit already, uh, but a little bit about how they can connect with you for any of this art sure. and like just where things are at for you right now. I, I know you've touched on it a little bit about some of the benefits you've experienced along yeah, the way. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, thank you. You're welcome. So I... Like I said, I've had, uh, over the last four years, I've uh, been able to assemble quite the portfolio in terms mm. of my hyperrealism work, which is what we call this kind of art, uh, hyperrealism drawings. Hyperrealism? Yes, because they, they pointed for them to look like photos. And mm. the thing is that sometimes when, uh, when some people do see them, they mm. think it's a photo, mm -hmm. which is kind of like uh, it underestimates how much Mm. I, efforts I put into it because, like I said, right, each piece would take 40, 50 hours to right. do two, three months, depends on the on the wow. mood, on like, all the things going on. And uh, one thing about artists is that we are our worst critic. Mm. So I could be working on something and I say, I hate this so much. Mm. I leave it alone. I take time off. I can mm. go a few days, a week, two weeks. Mm -hmm. And then I just say, like, okay, let's just put in an hour or two. After doing that, I'm like, this is the best thing ever. Wow. That's just how it changes. So it depends on the mood and <laughs> the day. Yeah, and, the love and sometimes thing. I'll just say it once more and just knock it out of the park. Some days you just keep like, what in the world am I doing? Mm. Kind of thing, right? That's just the way it is. And also because I'm right handed, the, mm. the way I sketch, I have to sketch from left to right. And mm. so that that way I don't smirch the paper. And because I work in charcoal and graphite, they're oh. very. Um, they're very like uh, easy to just make your hands dirty, which is not exactly a problem. Mm -hmm. uh, other artists, they work with oil painting, acrylic, watercolor and stuff, but I felt like I found my own niche Here. working in like mm -hmm. uh, with graphite and charcoal pencils. Mm -hmm. And um, this uh, drawing over here, we have, uh, I call it uh, Dear Future Self. Dear Future Self. Yes, mm. uh, it is, uh, everyone will have a different interpretation of it, frankly speaking. It's supposed to be subjective. Mm -hmm. Uh, it could be a case of a little girl envisioning greatness for herself, mm. you know, uh, words of affirmation, uh, future generation looking at past generation, a girl mm. fixing her own crown, a girl wanting to become like a, a beauty pageant, like a queen, um, mm. Miss World or something like that, mm -hmm. or even like Snow White, where like uh, she's looking at an uh, enchanted mirror, the first okay. lady in the land kind of thing, mirror, mirror on the mm. wall kind of stuff. So there are so many interpretations with that work and that took me about 35 hours to do. And the other one over there we have, I have it uh, tied to Face of Africa. I love them. So the map. Mm. that one has uh, obviously the first thing some people notice is the Africa mm. that is there, but the other side we have South America. Mm. And then the reason why you can see both of these continents is because there is uh, awareness on it with vitiligo. 
mm. similar to like the skin condition, like what Mike oh. Jackson had and stuff, because it, it points out to you the contrast between our face and why it's like, oh, I see Africa. So some people see Africa first, some people see South America, some people just see the bit of like mm. So uh, like that's the good thing about the drawing. Different people see different, different things, things very quickly. That again, it was a picture that I saw on social media and I was like, oh, I love that concept. So mm -hmm. reached out to the person and just like, I would love to draw that. And obviously it's, uh, it's one of my favorite pieces as well too. And yeah. because of that, I realized, you know what? I would like to put them on t-shirts, mm. um, which is where, and this idea came out like you know, a few months ago. And so since then I've kind of put it on t-shirts where they come in pink, gray or black mm. or face of Africa and dear future self. Mm -hmm. uh, hopefully I'd like to maybe do a few more pieces in the fall and winter and maybe I can think of putting them on shirts as well. Mm -hmm. uh, in the summertime, mm -hmm. I don't like to sketch as much, but because when it gets cold, you're not quite as active like mm -hmm. playing sports. Mm -hmm. So art is always there for me <laughs> in the fall and winter. Yeah. So um, I hope to do more. Mm -hmm. uh, my social media, I have um, Instagram, which is uh, Ola Forever, uh, O-L-A, uh, number four, R-E-V-E-R. That's my uh, Instagram. On there, you can find my Etsy link, which is uh, at with Ola mm -hmm. um, I have a lot more artworks on there, too, that people can uh, obviously purchase. And I ship as well. I do custom-made works. Mm -hmm. Like, if you wanted a commission piece mm -hmm. of yourself, if I have the reference. Like, you can draw people yes absolutely oh. okay do, yeah we're I, coming I, I, I can do that um, now here's, here's the funny thing about here's the funny thing to me about drawing people mm -hmm. if i uh obviously if i met someone right now and they give me their picture and say oh i want you to draw me mm -hmm. and i say okay here's the cost here is um how long it's going to take and whatnot mm -hmm. i would say okay that's not a problem i just stick to the reference they've given to me mm -hmm. and draw exactly what i see but now, mm -hmm. that same person, if I see them for like four or five months in a row, like almost every day, mm -hmm. and that same person then gives me the same picture, something like that, to scare and say, Ola, sketch me. Now it becomes more challenging. Mm -hmm. The reason why it becomes more challenging is because I'm going to start thinking, wait, I saw him yesterday or her yesterday. Mm -hmm. He didn't look like that. The mm -hmm. lashes were not bad. You know? <laughs> so the, the subconscious starts playing mind tricks on me because I'm thinking. The hair was short. The, the nose the, the and the, all of those things. <laughs> so you're thinking, okay, you know how sometimes, uh, sometimes we wake up on the wrong side of the bed, yeah. sometimes we wake up really good, so on and so forth. It's like, all right, just stick to the reference. <laughs> there is no comparison. Uh, That's why sometimes it's easier to draw celebrities. Because mm. you only have one concept of that, which is what you've seen on TV, and then mm. you see the picture. But if you know the celebrity like, personally, like, you know, in person, and you see them as friends, I, I don't know if other artists also feel this way, but that specifically to me, mm -hmm. I have that issue once I'm trying to sketch somebody that I know personally, and I've seen them many, many times, mm. and I compare it to what I see, it's like, oh, man, here we go, the mind tricks. Kay. So you have to, you know, it's a noise cancellation that you have to do as an artist in order to knock it out of the park okay really. yeah. okay so, so i'll be sure to give you my photo now <laughs> you don't know me that well exactly. <laughs> so we can get that going okay, okay. Yeah. thank you very much so no if problem. you want a sketch of yourself or you want to purchase any of this he's giving you the information and that's how you can connect with him mm -hmm. over to you maggie tell mm -hmm. us a little bit about your business mm -hmm. and how people can connect with you okay um my business is digital marketing digital marketing Okay. You, it's your business, but you do it online. Okay. You, you, we do it on social media platforms. Mm -hmm. um, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, whichever one you, pr you prefer. And it's legitimate business. Okay. All we do is we partner with some really big companies. And some companies prefer everyday people like you and I to promote their product. Absolutely. Instead of going to celebrities. Mm. So we partner with them. We market their product and we get very good commission. Mm. When I'm telling you good, it's really good commission. Okay. I'm telling you, people are making six figures. Like 6,000? Is that what six figures is? <laughs> <laughs> 
Can you please tell no, us? I think they got a, you need to add a few more zeros. It's few more um, It's serious, yeah. Uh, so People that have been. Right I just. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's serious. I just started the, the business just over a year ago, and it has completely changed my life. Aww. This business platform is it's. Over 200,000 people now. When I started, we were like 170,000, mm -hmm. and it's global. You do it on your phone as long as you have Wi Fi, mm -hmm. you have access to internet. You can take it with you anywhere you go. Mm. I never knew that there was another world on social media, or, or I call it online, online. Or, or, or how you call it. It's we used to say all you do is post your picture, post mm -hmm. your videos, and comment. No, mm -hmm. the world is going digital. People are making money online like crazy. Mm -hmm. When I went into this business, my eyes opened. Mm -hmm. People have been in the business, let's say two, three years. As I'm telling you, they're making six figures. And it's not for a year. It's not six figures in a year. Okay. No, it's not in a year. Okay. There's somebody that makes 122,000. She's, she's a Nigerian girl in one month. So you're telling me I can beat poverty? Yes, okay. you can. Yeah, okay. this day and age, you can. Okay. You can. I'm telling okay. you, you okay. can. It's good. It's yeah. legitimate. You should, you should put that on your forehead and put that on the shirt. Yeah, <laughs> think. Yeah, that's Beat my new. Right uh, that's, that, that's gonna be your motto. Yeah, as long as you have a cell phone, that's what I tell people. Mm -hmm. There is no reason mm -hmm. in 2024 for you to own a cell phone and you posting online. You're going on TikTok and you're not earning online. So you There's have to use no your time. No reason. Yeah. To your benefit. To your benefit. You have okay. to use social media to, to your, your benefit. benefit. Use social, social media, media to your benefit. And you, you, don't <laughs> you don't have to work hard. That's the other thing, right? Okay. Coming from Africa to the diaspora, we have this one mindset. Oh, I have to work, 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 work. Two, three Two, jobs. Two, three jobs. You don't have time for your family. You don't have time for your kids. Mm -hmm. No, you don't have to do that. If you love your job, you lo love your career, you can keep it. Mm -hmm. But always find a side hustle. Like find something you're doing for yourself that you own. It's your own business. It's registered under my name. I can incorporate it. I do my taxes. I get my T4A forms. If you're in the state, you get mm. your 1099. It's registered. Mm. It's registered. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We are rounding up here, um, but I we had an episode where we talked about um, having to have like an experience or like an academic background coming here to get a job. Mm -hmm. Do we need that? No, because I'm really liking no, the sound no, of no, making no, money no. right now. That's the good thing. <laughs> you don't need experience. You no. don't need degree. We have step by step training. Okay. Online. Okay. And it's automated. The system is automated. Okay. I will be sleeping and my business is making money. People are clicking my link and I'm making money. I'll okay. just get notification that, oh, congratulations, Margaret. You just, and I, I get people from all over, Australia, France, because it's online. That's the thing with the mm. digital, right? Mm. It's online. You're mm. not confined to, I'm not confined to Edmonton or just to the north end of Edmonton with, with my shop. Mm. My shop is online. Okay. It's di digital. Yeah. Okay. So to those that are listening that are just as anxious as me right now and want to make the money, oh, you should, you <laughs> um, should. how do we connect with you? Oh, my, my website, www.maggiemaclive.com. Okay, www.maggiemaclive.com. Yeah. Okay. So www.maggiemaclive.com. Yeah. C-O-M. Yeah. Okay. Wonderful. Okay. We've got about five minutes to round up here, but mm -hmm. I would like you both to please look at the camera and look at our audience oh. who are, who have been one, one lemonade or one lemon or two right now, and they're mm. not sure what to do with themselves. They're really struggling. Life feels like they're down and they cannot come back up anymore. Mm. What can you both say to them based off of experience and mm. the outcome that you've made of your own lemons? What can you say to them to encourage them? Um, I want to say, obviously, for myself, obviously coming here alone and having to figure a lot of things out for myself. Um, one of the, obviously, first and first, I really, really thank God uh, mm. a lot. Mm -hmm. Honestly, because uh, they're not everyone that obviously came here on their own where able to walk the same path that I did. Mm. And um, the other thing was obviously 
I did speak to my uh, mom, my family very often back in Nigeria, so that was also very um, mm. helpful. And of course, you're, we all know the pressure of a man or first son and all of those things that I so imagine being on my own. The other thing that is also very important was the kind of people I hung out with, mm. uh, that my circle. Now, I did know a lot of people, but personally, like not a lot of people know me and mm. also so I had that small circle and I was uh, I was very particular kind of friends that I had so we had friends in different so we had some with the IT the tech we had some that were like nurses we had some that were like tech or whatever it was mm. uh, so with that circle it definitely helped to get ideas and also more importantly I was friends with all races in terms of like different mm. backgrounds. That was one thing that I think helped me out because I stopped, sought out like people from other countries, you know, being Nigeria and obviously human nature, when we when we come to a foreign land, we always want to go gravitate. towards like yeah. gravitate towards people from our own country. So needed to find someone from other countries so you get ideas. So it was definitely helpful to mm. be who I am today. Beautiful, beautiful. So God, Mm. And family, family, and, and fr diversifying friendships. Choose your friendships Friendship. very well, exactly. mm. and don't limit yourself to just people from your, your people. Country. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Okay, from thank you people. very much. Okay, short few words to the viewers. Well, I would say you you already hit the major point: mm -hmm. God, family, mm -hmm. and the people you surround yourself in. But for me, mostly it's my faith in God. Mm -hmm. Because so many times, even my closest friend has asked me, oh, how did you get through this? It has nothing to do with me. It's because of my faith in God. So if life dealt you lemons, mm -hmm. and s sometimes we'll think it's life. Sometimes it's even God that would, would give you lemons. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, mm -hmm. just, I, just coming from church, right? And that's what the pastor was saying. Oh, they, they th okay. They, yeah, they threw Joseph in the pit. Mm -hmm. That was lemon. Mm -hmm. But that was his way to get to Egypt. Mm -hmm. So sometimes when life dealt you lemons, mm -hmm. maybe that's the way God is, that's the way for you to get to your destination, ah, to your promised like land. So trust God, believe in yourself. If you guys, if you fall one time, you'll surely rise again. Beautiful, beautiful. Look at that. This has been a treat. And from what I gather from all of this, God does not give you a load that you that cannot can. bear. Yeah, you can. Okay? So whatever situation you're in right now, however pressing that situation feels, however low you feel you have gone, mm. you can only get up and get going. God is preparing you for your tomorrow. Mm. So make good use of your today. Learn what there is to learn about this very moment. Rise, become a better version of yourself. Mm. And we thank you both for making time to come here. Happy to make sure to contact him for the art and contact her for the business because we want to get rich. Business. I, I, I don't know about business. you, but I want to be rich. <laughs> so we are going you to her. And until our next um, episode, Sabe Sandindi. Sambe, Sambe, Sambe,